it's in the air but it's quite safe and Graham Wood has made a hundred in the first match here way back in 1880 WG Grace made the first test century for England and now Graham Wood for Australia has made a hundred off 244 balls a marvellous ovation from the crowd from his teammates Graham Wood is a former Australian cricketer who played in 59 test matches and 83 one-day internationals from 1978 to 1989. He scored nine test centuries in his career, which was a record for a Western Australian until it was surpassed by Justin Langer. He was born in Fremantle, Perth, and he was a left-handed batter. Not sure. Pulled away very nicely indeed. Four runs. I'm really grateful that Graham agreed to chat to me via Zoom from Western Australia, That's and I hope you guys enjoy. Thanks so much for coming. Let's get on to it. Uh, could you tell us a bit about your cricketing story, uh, like your childhood cricket club? Uh, yeah, I started with uh, Willoughby under 14, so I was only about nine years old when I started there, and um, there was a uh, gentleman by the name Donna Rundle who was the coach. And it worked out that uh, two of our two of the players that played in that under 14 team went on to play Test cricket. There was one was myself, and one was Kevin Wright, who uh, played for WA in South Australia and also for Australia. Um, from there, I went down and played with Fremantle uh, in the under 16s, and um, started my uh, first grade career with Fremantle, and then went to university after that. Who was your childhood cricket hero? Uh, well, I uh, I went to the first test match in Perth. My, my father uh, bought me tickets to every day. It was 1970 and Greg Chappell made his debut and made 100. So I, I had a real soft spot for the Chappells, uh, both Greg and Ian. So uh, though probably Ian was more of an idol for me when I was growing up. And who's your current favourite player? Uh, it'll probably upset a few people, but I, I love watching uh, Virat Kohli bat. He's a very, very good player. Um, I went to a, a match in Perth here, and uh, generally if I go to a test match, I'll stay for an hour or so and then sort of head home after lunch. And But he batted on this day on a wicket that was reasonably difficult and uh, made a century, and I stayed there for the whole day. I love watching his technique and the way he goes about things. Yeah, when he's on, really bad. Um, and who was your favourite teammate to play with? My favourite teammate? Um, <clears throat> I, I made a debut with Darling, and he was tw just just over 20 years of age. I was 21. And um, we, we went on a tours to India and um, also to the West Indies. And I still keep in contact with Rick. Um, so it was a really good close bond. So he, he'd be my favourite teammate. Hardest bowler to face? Um, it's a funny one, this one. I, when I first started playing against the West Indies, Joel Garner used to bowl second or third chance because they had uh, bowlers like Roberts and Holding and Croft who were in front of him at that stage. But once he was given the new ball, uh, a couple of years down the track, he was very, very difficult for left-handers. So he's so tall. He was six foot ten, six foot eleven, and he used to hit the seam and go away towards the the, the slip. So Joel Garner was the hardest bowler I had to face. What was the most memorable cricket moment in your career? Uh, I, I thoroughly enjoyed captaining Western Australia, Sheffield Shield, and getting three three shields in a row, which hadn't been done before by a WA team. But I think from a personal perspective, making 100 against the West Indies at the Wacker, um, having my family there, my wife, my kids and grandparents and parents, was a real uh, treat for me, um, the fact that I, I could do that in front of them. And we just talked about your, your most memorable cricket moment. What was the most challenging cricket moment in your career? Uh, I, I had a very successful tour to the West Indies. Um, and then I went to India, was selected to go to India after that. And I, I struggled on that tour and it was really hard work. It was a long tour, three and a half months. Um, so that was really hard. I had to then come back and rebuild and get back into the West Australian team and try to get back into the, the Australian side. 
yeah, the Indian pitches are very different to the pitches here, so it's a bit hard to, uh, you know, getting good form for international games. Sikander to Wood. Oh, that's great six. Really picked that up beautifully. Are you involved in any cricket currently? I am, yeah. I, uh, I work at um, Christchurch Grammar School. Um, so I'm director of cricket there and also coach the first 11. Uh, also, I'm on, still on the, on the board at the, at the WACA, um, which is an exciting thing at the moment because we're going through a, a, a project to, to redevelop the ground. So you yeah, have a fairly heavy involvement in cricket still. And what are you, what's your thoughts on E20 cricket? Yeah, it's, it's introducing a new audience to cricket, which is great, but I'm, I'm a purist. I like test cricket. I love watching test cricket and the fact that you can play five days and, you know, go down to that last last session or whatever to try and get a result. But T20, is, it's been very profitable for the game. It's been very good for the players. Um, and as I say, it's introduced a new audience, um, you know, a, a, a probably a, a lot younger audience and also more female skew towards uh, watching cricket, which is a good thing for, for the whole game. I, I love test cricket as well. In fact, I could probably watch more test cricket than T20 cricket as well. You, I can watch T20 cricket for about an hour um, and it's fun, but, t uh, but test cricket, I can just watch and watch and watch and watch. Uh, test cricket is called test cricket for a reason. Um, it tests the best players. Sometimes T20 can be you know, a little bit uh, predictable, uh, the way they go about it. It's a very short format, but T20 is very much about planning and e each ball is, is, is essential, each over is essential. So totally different way you, you would attack the game. But um, as I say, test cricket is the, the, the be all and end all for me. If you could give the next generation a piece of batting advice against fast bowlers, what would you say? Uh, well, I was brought up in Perth where we had, um, you know, really good wickets and good fast wickets. So you got used to playing against quick bowling. Um, what my advice would be to make sure that um, you stay nice and side on, but you utilise the crease. So you get back and give yourself as much time as possible, uh, in particular with really quick bowlers. So I used to have a trigger movement. Um, so it's generally just back and across and to give yourself plenty of time, make sure you utilise the whole crease. And what about spinners? Uh, what I do try to do with my coaching in particular with, with spinners, playing against spinners, is that when you come up against a good quality spinner, you've got to be able to sweep. And playing the sweep shot is, is quite difficult. <clears throat> it takes plenty of practice. But if you can sweep proficiently, uh, it really does change the game. So I, I try to encourage young players to get as good as they possibly can playing the sweep shot. And on the topic of coaching, uh, what drills are you fond of for batting and bowling? Uh, well, you can bat, you've just got to hit balls all the time. But the most important thing from my perspective is, is, is shadow batting. So you bat with a ball in front of the middle, utilising your top hand, making sure you get your lines right and you're nice and side on. Um, if you do that, your footwork will always improve. And I, I know with boys that have done it, I can see it in the, in the, when they're batting at practice. And I know when they haven't been able to do it or when they haven't done it, they've been lazy. So that's very important. All it takes is five or 10 minutes a day, just shadow, shadow batting at home in front of the mirror. And as you can see, you've got a bat behind you there. You should have a bat in the lounge room and also in the bedroom. Mum might not like it, but that's the way it is. Okay? That's right. I assume you've been watching the cricket recently. What are your thoughts on the Ashes at the moment? Uh, well, Australia's bowling very well. They've got a really good attack. You know, the fact that they could replace two of their leading bowl and still win the Test match speaks um, very, very highly of their, of their bowling attack. I think England are a little bit underdone in regard to batting. That the, Their dead in batting, Luke, an outstanding player. Stokes is probably not quite in form at the moment, but the rest, I think, are really struggling here with the Australian conditions. So... I would think that um, everything going to plan, Australia will win it uh, in a clean sweep. Thanks so much for your time. It was really nice to meet you. Yep, no worries. Good Thank luck you. in your career.
Thank you. See you Steered away too through the uh, vacant area between Slip and Gully, and it brings 52 groundward. The two good shots played with a lot of dogged determination here this morning, and goes through to his first 50 in this country in a Test match out of a total of 91 for one. Thank you for watching, and thank you for 500 subscribers. I really appreciate it, and I look forward to more content in the future. Uh, as it stands, 97.8% of you guys are still not subscribed, so if you do like some of this content, please consider subscribing. Thanks for watching.